Well, how's it going, everybody? I'm Barry and Welcome back to Pikmin 4. Kind of tail. And it was probably going to be the last video on Pikmin 4. Unless some, like, fantastically new Honey. interesting content drops in the future. Which, uh, you know, that could be interesting. Or it could happen enough for me to make some videos about it. I don't know. Who cares? <clears throat> so, with the last video, you know what? You knew you wanted it. It's here. Louie's notes on everything. I hit the wrong button again. <coughs> <coughs> Time for stuff I already read at some point in Pikmin 2. For a blissful bisque, means the entire beast finally in stirring with heavy cream, artichoke hearts, and a pinch of black pepper. Peel slowly until piping hot. Mmm, rich and creamy. Peel off the skin, starting at the tail end, then thin... Then slice thinly and boil in a pot of heavy salt of water. Serve immediately. <coughs> <coughs> Man. Plum specimens are best barrels as a whole, stuffed with a lime and a slab of bacon, based frequently to ensure a magnificently moist haunch. It's a large creature, but the meat is tender and flavorful. It's impossible to eat in one sitting, so store some portions for later. Coat the fat of your meat in cooking oil and freeze. Lena cuts should be smoked. Hmm. Although difficult to repair, this exquisite creature is more than worth the effort. Great in fajitas. This bulbar's meaty flanks make for deliciously savory steaks that shouldn't be missed. Remove innards, stuff with sage, and finally uh, age friscato, I think that's how I pronounce that, and world until golden brown, the ultimate crowd pleaser. For an unrivaled green curry, peel away the spy bulbar's skin, pulverize the juicy innards, and stew until curiously fragrant. A sweet and savory meat that pairs well with a simple green salad. Sear the rich and fatty meat on both sides in a dab of butter, then sprinkle generously with uh, fresh thyme. For those who prefer leaner cuts, I, I recommend the tip of the nose. A dab like a... Dab with them haters like I just did right now? No stove, no problem! This sizzling beast practically cooks itself! Remember to thoroughly extinguish the steaks before, uh, prior to eating. <coughs> Pat the tongue dry, then coat all sides with a spicy dry rub of your choice. Grill over high heat until the outside is perfectly crisp. This is the Pikmin 3 note, but you probably already under- you You're probably gonna guess that. This meager creature offers little meat, but eyeballs a local delicacy. Try them with okra and top of sour cream. For sophisticated delicacy, make a pat- A pate de foie gras from this massively obese creature's liver and spread it over a sesame cracker. I think that's how you pronounce that. Did I ever read- Did I- yeah, I'm pretty sure I read uh, Donald's notes for. Did I? Because I don't remember uh, reading the scientific name. <laughs> oh well. To prep the tongue for cooking, marinate in olive oil and chop into cubes. Stir in a pot with carrots, potatoes, and chives. Co cover and simmer over low heat for several ho hours. Accompanying, accompany this mouth-watering mustard stew with a hearty roll. <clears throat> For a light appetizer, pluck the ferns off its back and slightly, and lightly cook it to remove any restriction of flavor. The tongue, eyes, lips, meat, and the tongue, eyes, lips, meat, and fat are very tasty and can be prepared in a variety of ways. Mature specimens have a more highly developed umami flavor. Roast this flavorful beast for several hours, letting it stew in its own succulent juices. Don't worry about cooking, overcooking this beast; it's squirt proof. This beast's unrivaled moistness gives it a melt-in-the-mouth quality that's incom incomparable. Sprinkle lightly with salt and eat while the ice bag is still fresh and crunchy. Just one bite will give you the most satisfying brain freeze. Creatures, uh, creature too large to carve. Bigger is not better in this case. <coughs> Easily carved, I should say. Oh, I should have said. Scrape the interior of its elongated nose with a spoon for a quick, a quick dessert of meaty shaved ice. Add a drizzle of uh, sashimi grade soy sauce to take it up a notch. Stew with root veggies and wild greens and a bit of miso for mouth-watering and rustic flavor. Dried all the blood beforehand to avoid that gamey smell. Carefully remove every grain of sand, peel back exoskeleton, and slurp heartily. Or deep fry it too. That's new. <coughs> Man. <coughs> Does not want to get out of my throat. Drop into boiling water and let it cook until the shell turns red. Remove the pot and... And peel. Uh, remove from the pot. Remove from the pot and peel. Uh, sprinkle the drained meat with rock salt. Ooh, that's a nice touch. Peel back the shell and sprinkle the tender meat with a dash of salt before slipping it raw. For refreshing dessert, pour all fruit juice over the snowballs. Boil the meaty legs until fully cooked and drizzle with a generous amount of lemon juice. Once the juice has steeped its way to the muscle fibers, suck the meat out of the shell with, a, with one big slurp. 
Void, Unforgettable Quiche, slices this creature up and mixed with four eggs, two of my tom tomatoes, diced zucchini, and generous handfuls of feta and Swiss. Bake until crusty and golden. This beast is most flavorful if caught and cooked just after laying its eggs. Spread several specimens in the bottom of a casserole dish, lay with sliced avocado on top with cheese, bake until the meat is cooked through and the cheese is lusciously browned. Best enjoy when, when big or round and full of eggs. Salt lightly, then grill. The squishy, sticky moth feel will have you coming back for more. Grate this beast into a zest and whisk with sugar cream and top dark chocolate with her lusciously indulgent mousse. That's a true culinary cool coup de gras. Or coup de gras, not coup de gras. <clears throat> French words are funny. Salty, sour, and sometimes sweet. The flavor changes depending on which living creature it's fed from most recently. Boil in the shell with a pinch of salt till bright red and serve piping hot with tartar sauce. Remove shale, mix over a low flame, then grind meat. Whisk paste into olive oil until emulsified. An extra dash of cumin leaves some earth lends some earthiness to the spicy salad dressing. Remove the wings, marinate a well marbled steak for several hours in chipotle marinade, then char broil for to perfection. The superb amalgamation of juicy meat and leafy greens ensures that the skitter leaf will be the new spinach. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had to burp again. No, pressure, no preparation needed to enjoy this flavorful beast. Its natural crunch gives it way to an, an intriguing mouthfeel. But intriguing isn't always good, you know? The search for a gourmet high protein salad topping alternative to bacon bits is over! Grind this spicy dweevil into a tasty amount of micro chunks and toss them generously over your salad to add instant flair and flavor. Raw island dweevil makes for an unforgettable sushi treat, but if it's not prepared by an expert hand with exacting precision, consumption could result in an adult electrical explosion of apocalyptic proportion. Inedible. Methods of consumption include uncontrollable arm flailing and enthusiastic dishwashing. Soak the legs in fruit juice and freeze. Serve as a refreshing ice pot. Exposure to even extreme heat doesn't seem to rid this creature of deposits of potent gas. It's probably best for everyone if you avoid eating this hazardous fare. This is the this is the munge dweevil note. That's the munge dweevil note. This is the venom dweevil. Completely different things, unfortunately. <sighs> Louis, you can't you can't just copy and paste one of your recipes like that on me. I caught on to you immediately. Pluck off the legs, crack open, and savor the meat inside. Dip them in soy sauce first for a nice mix of sweet and salty. Not as tasty as it looks. Completely inedible. Although the meat is a bit on the metallic side, the oil makes a mouth-watering makes a mouth gravy or lubricative, 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 lubricative vinaigrette. This creature is mostly tendon, so it often gets stuck in your teeth. It smells like burnt plastic or possibly metal. Drain the electrical charge before boiling. Although it is possible to eat an animal beetle while it's charged, doing so may result in an unpleasant tingling sensation. An essential flavor of accent ingredient in jumbo and gambala jumbo and gambala gumbo and jambalaya. Also delicious in soups, broths, and marinades. Looking for a flavor that will surprise and delight your guests? This beast aroma may surprise your guests, but it won't be delightful. This precious treat is exceptionally rare. I can sell it back at home for a fortune. Then I can use the cash to upgrade my kitchen by galactic class ingredients and even start my own cooking show, The Insect Gourmet. Flash fry with garlic and red chili. Chilies in a hot pan sprinkled with grated go gorgonzola. Some dinner guests may put my legs unappealing, so it's best to remove them before serving. An acquired taste, but it's really quite addictive once you get used to it. No special, prepar no special preparation necessary. The extreme... The extremities cannot be used for food, but you can drink the liquid inside for a zesty beverage. That sounds gross. Even after draining the mud, its texture remains gritty. Chew it for long enough, and your teeth will get a good scrubbing. Remove the wings and drop straight into the deep fryer. Cook until golden or until the enticing aroma starts to sting your eyes. Serve immediately. For a tasty appetizer, drip, dip wings into a batter and fry. It can also be used to season stews and soups. Remember the first remove its bitter innards. Spread larva on a slice of toast for a spicy and protein-packed breakfast, or fry up the wings at any time for at any time of day for a sweet and crunchy snack. Dice finely or puree to make a meaty sorbet. Add a tiny drizzle of fruit sauce for some punch. Pluck the wings and intended beforehand to use as a garnish if you want to get fancy. When thinly sliced, this predator sizable bulb makes for a sumptuous pizza topping. It doesn't have a bulb! There is no bulb on this thing, unless well, it's supposed to be like the body in this case, but there doesn't have a bulb! Louis. No, I don't. No. I have an issue with the writers in this case. It's not even Louis, it's the writers. What's wrong with you? It doesn't have a bulb. 
If you can successfully remove the tongue's poison glands, you'll enjoy a rare, a rare opportunity to appreciate the umami synergy of the mushroom and meat combo. So there's a lot of umami in this game, apparently. Butter bugs are hearty and nutritious, but also bland and unimaginative. They may be palatable in a pinch, but they hold no true culinary purpose. Although cooking in this colossal beast yields a mountain of meat, every ounce of it is flavorless, always suitable for intergalactic all you can eat buffets. Heat the golden crystals on its back until they melt into a caramel sauce. Flip the creature upside down and bake until the skin develops a crunchy candied crust. This meat gives off a, t a faint aroma more similar to a hot pepper. The flavor itself is subtle and elegant. Char grill the ill turret until blackened, and you've got a nutritional superfood. Gently peel the skin back from the nose. Its meat has a grassy bitterness. Tastes like cucumber. The bitter flavor fades as they grow, replaced by a sweet mellow aroma. Sue the base of the trunk, grill the middle, and or smoke the tip. The possibilities are endless. Season with salt and pepper. Oh, I get it, because it's an egg. Jelly remove the jelly parts, add fruit and sweetener of your choice, and then serve as a gelatin dessert. Grind up the meat and cartilage and mold into meatballs. The tender texture of the meat contrasts nicely with the crunchy chewy cartilage bits. Gross. Slice the uh, serpentine torso into thin medallions, skewer on a metal rod with hot onions, and barbecue over an open flame. Breasts, thighs, and wings can be baked, roasted, or fried. The rest of the car carcass is great for flavoring a rich soup stock. Remove the internal meat and place directly on the place directly on the shell while it's still smoldering to cook. It almost smells better than it tastes. Sauté in butter, then cover and cover with a sauce made from the green liver paste. Anyone with a highly developed palate will enjoy this slightly bitter flavor profile. The meat under the icy side of the shell is quite muscular, so while the other side is nice and fatty, two great tastes in one. Flip upside down and cook cap over a charcoal grill, low and slow. Once it starts to sweat, it's ready to eat. Bury it ground for about 40 days so the poison can leach out. Its smell will make you gag, but the flavor has notes, notes of chocolate. Taste best of eat just before the meat spoils. Once all the mold has been removed, enjoy a, flavor, a unique flavor reminiscent of dry aged meat. It's also kind of gross. After removing the poison, the broth is fragrant and savory. Don't drink too much or you'll find yourself with a crippling tummy ache. Remove tongue and discard the rest. Go for a chocolate grill until medium rare. Pan roast the thighs with sprigs of rosemary and whole garlic cloves. Finish with a squeeze of fruit juice to highlight the subtle notes of the lingering electricity. Inedible. Tastes like chicken. Cut the meat into four even slices, dip slices into a beaten egg, and then dredge in breadcrumbs. Fry over low heat. Although the eggs are small, the yolk has a distinctly bold and tangy flavor. Try tossing a few in a pan along with your choice of meat and fresh vegetables, and cook up a hearty country scramble. Slice this creature's thin light skin to triangles, deep fried to crispy, and salt generously. Makes the perfect scooping chip to accompany fresh mango salsa. Has the consistency of candy coated chewing gum and at least a refreshing, mentholated aftertaste. Oh, well, that's quite convenient. Hang this creature on a rack, and. Wow, I really. Almost cracked my voice in there. And uh, sun drying on a high afternoon. When suddenly crisps grind the sun dried beast into powder, makes a great substitute for cayenne or curry powder. Similar in taste and texture, gelatin, this really massive jelly can be sculpted with all kinds of creative shapes. As a bonus, it also doubles as professional great hair gel. It's the perfect cool summer treat. Like a fine cheese, the aroma of this fluid floor can be oppressive, but its flavor must be experienced to be believed. Also makes it unforgettable, non dairy spread. Wog poles can be eaten raw, but they're much more flavorful when steamed or grilled. Also heavenly and risotto. Or, it's not risotto, it's risotto. Feel free to experiment with this lush ingredient. Coat in thick batter deep fry for a dino flavor you won't soon forget. Mmm. Something's missing. <clears throat> if I recall correctly, and I'm pretty sure I do, I'm confident, I do, mildly confident, that Pic uh, Louis' note in Pikmin 2 says you should beer batter it. Because, you know, the mention of beer in a Nintendo game was a little bit odd, and I, I noticed! Oh, you can't change the note for the Creepy Xanthamon, but you got you can get rid of the word beer! Stupid censors. Wally Wogs! Almost the wrong word. Our best ground up shape to a patty and flame broiled on a grill. Flap on tomato slices, lettuce, onions, and ketchup, and then slice the patty between the sesame and slice the sesame. Slide the patty between the sesame, sesame seed bun for the ultimate beast burger experience. Remove the tender meat surrounding the eyes and stew us with soy sauce. The collagen fibers are simply melting in your mouth delicious. Meat can be consumed in first dehydrated with a lot of salt, but the eyeballs and the legs are be the best parts. Deep fried apples without batter for all the flavor with half the fat. Slice raw and serve as sashimi. The, the marbled fat gives this dish a deep umami flavor. 
Move the players in internal organs and slice thinly and serve as sashimi. The fur meat is bourbon with umami flavor, because we'll light refreshing citrus vinaigrette. There's so much umami in this game. Like, no other flavors? Perfect frame, make ahead meals. Uh, marinate the boiled meat in balsamic vinegar, then chill for a few hours. The longer you set less it, the richer the flavor. Throw a mountain of a crab offspring into a pot for a yummy and simple miso soup broth. Great for a hot pot. Remove the shell, cook legs in the hot broth. When they turn out, when they turn nice and red, pull them out and slather in liver paste before eating. Pluck off the lips and serve with lemon and salt as appetizer. Coat the arms and legs with plenty of miso for a full course dinner in a shell. Chuck from the shell, bake on high heat until crispy, then dip in a pot of melted milk chocolate. Lip smacking sweet. When grilled, served as an excellent filling for an offbeat po' boy. If you ever have any, if you have, if you have any left over, add to a liver paste to deepen the flavor. The tip of the tail tastes almost fruity with notes of sweet and sour. Pairs well with soft ripened cheeses. Heat in the shell over a strong fire to bring out the umami rich. Umami rich juices. Finally mince the mantle and toss it with uh, noodles. Top with sesame seeds. Pay and sear with herbs and, till, and oil until lightly crusted on the outside and rosy on the inside. Complement the savory flavor with light and buttery cream sauce. The fatty muscle that controls these undulating motions must be eaten fresh. All that quick movement means the tongue, uh, the, the, means the meat toughens quickly. There's no tongue, just the meat toughens quickly. Leave it out overnight to drain the mud from the carcass. When ready to eat, cut into rings and grill over high heat. The more you chew it, the more flavorful it becomes. I would not eat this. Inedible, known to cause mass hysteria, followed by leg spasms and internal thunderings. Egg tastes best when smoked. The flavor of the belly and the head is pleasantly warming. The ultimate ride, plush and comfortable. I wish I could bring it home with me. Oh, you're not going to eat it? Convenient for procuring ingredients. Compact with a light turning radius. With a tight turning radius. Looks like a pick bit carrot. I bet it tastes good, but I'm practicing self-restraint. When I look at it, all I see is ears. I look at the mouth and just want to put my hand in it, just to see what would happen. <laughs> just to see what would happen. Oh, that, it's funny. I like that one. I think I broke a tooth on one of these. I once had a tough dream. I once had a dream that I was abducted by a winged specimen. A kitchen essential, a kitchen essential use for freezing ingredients and storing leftovers. Not meant to be ingested. Best used as bait. Very heavy. Tenderizing the meat would be too difficult. If you look closely, you'll see its legs are sprouting a dense layer of hair. Oh, that's continuity from the first game, because if this, one of Olimar's monologues, or voyage logs from the first game mentions this. Of course, you'll only find it to go to the Impact site, like, for all 30 days, but, you know, that's still... Moving on. Sod, tea, and oil, and add a fragrant spice to your dish. Uh, to add a fragrant spice to your dish. But eat too much, and you'll smell like it for days. Way too spicy for a salad, but no matter what color bud you use. On a quest for the perfect ores, or de vor, I have no idea, no idea how to pronounce that. So I'll cook this plant in a wood fire oven, but be careful to only serve the tender pellet. Dry the fruit and grind it to a fine consistency, perfect for adding a touch of spice. Or, or, or bitterness. Doesn't smell alive. So it's a lot like an onion. The green juice is particularly delicious. And we're done! Not even 20 minutes. That one wasn't too bad. Hey, you know what? There's just enough time left in the day to talk to Bernard. Because I want to... We're done. We're done. I don't care about that last... I do kind of care about that last thing I haven't built, but... Oh, well. We're going home. I rescued everybody. I read all the things. I built 42 out of 43 structures. Let's do it. You're ready to take off? Like, literally? That means you'll be, you'll be saying goodbye to this planet. For good, nah, it's fine. Yes. Great. Okay, okay. I'll go the Ezra Shepherd. We're taking off right away. It's just a cutscene again, but different dialogue, right? It could be. Our flight path is clear, and all safety mechanisms, safety mechanisms are, are good working order. All officers are preparing for takeoff. <laughs> Primary engine ready. I think I read this before. All right, ready for launch. What a success! We rescued all the castaways, including every last Leafling, and go home without any regrets. Bye. You should be all proud of you. Should all be proud of yourselves and the excellent work you've done here. Next stop, home. As a shepherd, launch. Okay. 
Copy that! I just wanted to read the text that I didn't find the first time. Oh, so now they're gonna be winged and rock on Oh, yes, there's dolphins here, too! No secret Pikmin colors this time, no, like, green and orange onions? Well, time to go home. Are we gonna watch the credits again? Because if we're gonna watch the credits again, I'm probably just gonna like stop halfway through. So, let's talk about the game. I'll just talk over the cutscene because yeah, there's a dolphins here too. That wasn't here before, and I like that. Well, I don't say I like it that, that it wasn't here. I like I say I like it because it is here. I think kind of still going off. <laughs> Yay! I win! I can see this epic, this, this, this epic scene again. Absolutely fantastic. So, you know, I had my fun with this game, you know, but, and I'm going to be honest with you here, I, I think, I think, Pikmin 5 win. I think the game could have been better. It just, in, in general, like, 40, 47 hours. Holy crap, 40, okay, so let's be honest here. At least two of those hours for me reading stuff. So, because like two of these extra, extra two of these extra episodes have just been an hour long of me reading all of those notes. <laughs> so, uh, subtract two hours from that, maybe an extra twenty minutes off of that for the uh, forty-five and a half hours isn't that bad, right? And seven seconds. I now have a thousand one hundred thirteen Pikmin. Everything is 100% completed. Uh, I killed the most blue Pikmin. Grand total. Somehow. So I don't know how, but I did. Oh, and we're back here on the main menu. Th 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 this actually reminds me. Four! Four jump scare. So... Let's look at the, uh, let's look at the gallery. So... Okay, so I'm curious as to what these are. So th this is probably the intro cutscene. This is the cutscene after you make the, your character. This is, I forget what this is. That's the credits. That's the cutscene without the SS Dolphin. That's the cutscene with, the end of cutscene with the SS Dolphin. Don't know what that is. No, no, that's the ending cutscene to the Shepherd Tale, obviously. I don't remember what that is. It's probably just, like, the ending dialogue. And I don't remember what that is. No, that's probably what you're turning into a leafling. Yeah. So, probably nothing secret here that we haven't already seen. I don't remember what this, what this cutscene is. I'll just go ahead and watch that, just for a second to remind myself. Oh, okay, I think I think I'm getting it now. I think I'm getting it now, okay, so. Okay, can I Let's skip it. <laughs> oh yeah. This. Also a really long time to load these cutscenes. 
Holy crap! Well, that's um, definitely going to be it for today's video. And this menu now. I like this Ochi. So, and also that's going to be it for probably this series on Pikmin 4. For the time being, unless, like I said, some mega interesting DLC dropped for this game. Um, but, thanks for watching, everybody. Catch you guys whenever. Like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for more stuff whenever it comes out. I don't know. Uh, new Pikmin 4 content. If I do that, I've said it like three times now. I'm not stalling, I swear. Um, so, well, I said everything I need to say. Goodbye.